morning, and uh, I wanted to preach a passage, and then I wanted to remind you of some things that we have been talking about for over a decade now, and then trying to figure out how we're going to put all that together. So what I decided to do is I'm just going to preach this um, in this way. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I want to use that kind of like a launching pad and kind of wrap it all up today, what I have to say to you in this sermon. Do you know your ABC? I just, I just want to in the form of a question and using that passage as a launching passage, I just want to leave with you and ask you to remember, do you know your ABC? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. For the last 12 years, what we tried to get across to you and what I'm sure you have grasped is that the Christian life is not about you trying to get a blessing from God, maintain a blessing from God. The Christian life is not about you asking the question, how do I keep God from jumping on me? It's not a program where if I um, mark out these certain things, you see, come to church so much, attend Bible study, read, do a quiet time, pay my tithes. And if I mark these things out, then got a few things that I don't do no more. You know, the top 10, master nine, kill the three. And you get to make the list, see. And as long as I'm not doing those things, me and God are pretty good. And I try to get us to think about the salvation that we have received in Jesus Christ, not as blessings that I'm trying to get, but the Christian life is about living from a place of blessing. There is never a time in your life, if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your savior, there is never a time in your life where you are not blessed. Let me just go on and put it like that. I want to free you up. If you haven't already been free, you should have been, you've been, we've been talking about it for 20 years. But in the Christian life, those of you who have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, there is never a time in your life from now until the time you stand before the face of God that you are not blessed. You have a blessed status. How do I know that? Because of the verse that I just read, blessed be the God and Father by Lord Jesus Christ. Let's applaud God. Let's praise God. Let's eulogize God. Right? Blessed be the God and Father by Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. It's a done deal. It's an established fact. You don't live the Christian life trying to get blessed. You live the Christian life established as a blessed person. And now that I know, listen to me, now that I know that I am blessed, I can now be free to be a blessing. <laughs> Let me do that one more time. It's important for you to know that you are blessed. Not just so you know you're going to heaven or that you have eternal security and all of that, which is true. But it ain't just about you going to heaven. It frees you to be a blessing to somebody else. Because if I don't think I'm blessed, how am I going to give what I don't think I have? You can't leave where you don't go.
go. You can't teach what you don't know. You can't give what you do not have. So in order for me to be a blessing, I must first be a blessed person. So if I'm living my Christian life, always trying to hold on or trying to get a blessing, I'll be so preoccupied with myself that I won't have time to be a blessing to other people. So let's just establish the fact that God, there is nothing that you can do to make God love you less. And there is nothing that you can do to make God love you more. Look at me when I say it. There is nothing that you can do that will make God love you less. You don't have to. God is not a reluctant lover looking for a way out of a relationship. And some of us have applied to God what we have went through with our relationship. What we get back, we keep running in and running my life. Keep running. Now, that's him. That's her. Y'all woke this morning. I know all this bad good stuff, but I'm still preaching now. Y'all come on with me when I tell you, no, yeah, no, uh -uh, that's him, that's her. But God remains the same. So you are not in a performance-based relationship where the better I live and the more I do, the more he will love me, the more blessed I will be. You are already operating from a place. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now understand, the blessing is in Christ Jesus. Let's do it again. The blessing is in Christ Jesus. That is, in order for you to get what God has for you, you've got to come through Jesus Christ. There is no other way to get a blessing from God outside of Jesus who is, let me do this one more time. We say it on Sunday, but let me tell you, there is no other way to be blessed by God than through Jesus Christ. It ain't about you are an American. You don't get the blessing because you are an American. Oh, yeah, I know I was going to throw the rest out. And because we Americans and we blessed, and because we support Israel, we are blessed. Israel in trouble themselves with God. I say Israel is in trouble with God themselves. Paul is going to say, I'm crying for my brothers who are Israel that they believe the gospel. So even Israel is not saved because of their biology. They're saved because of their belief in Jesus Christ. And because Missionary Baptist Church in Moses Valley. Uh, Euless, Texas, God could care less 
about that as it relates to being blessed. You are only blessed in Jesus Christ. So, if you ever want to go and see what those blessings are, I invite you to read chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. And it tells you what the Father gave you. It tells you what the Son gave you. And it tells you what the Holy Spirit gave you. I like to call it, uh, yeah, faith with benefits. Y'all have heard of friends with benefits. I advise you to stay away from all that. But uh, there is a such thing as faith with benefits. And if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you are blessed. And God can't love you no more than what he loves you. He will never love you any less. So I wanted to use that as a springboard to just talk to you about do you know your ABCs? That is, do you know the blessings that God has put in your life. Do you know what your identity is in Jesus Christ? From time to time, I gave it to you and would run it down in the form of A, B, C, so that you could remember it. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You ain't gonna play it with me? H, I, J, K, K, L, 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 P, Q, R, S, T, U, V. W, X, Y, and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Then you gotta go get somebody next time, won't you? Sing with me. But what are all brothers and sisters, your ABCs? If you have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, can we just go through this one more time? Open up the doors of the church and go eat some chicken. A, you are accepted in the beloved. That is, you didn't have to do anything to get God to accept you. You also, A, been adopted into the family of God. Now, you do remember that being adopted in the family means that you have all the rights and the privileges of what it means to be in God's family. You've been adopted. But not only, matter of fact, let me put it like this, that we told you this while back about this uh, girl and his boy, brothers and sisters. One of them was born into the family. The other one was adopted. They went back and forth. And the one that was born into the family turned around and said, would always tease and bully the person that was adopted into the family. And uh, she said, yeah, at least I'm adopted. We never argue. Yeah, at least I, you adopted. I was born. Yeah, at least I was born in the family. And the child that was adopted got tired of being picked on like that. Next time she said, yeah, I was born into the family. You were adopted. She said, yeah, but let me tell you what that means. That means that when mama and daddy had you, they had to take whatever came out. But with me, they came down and pointed me out and chose me as is, just as I was, and brought me in and made me family. Looked at me as so I wish I had somebody. I've been, I've been adopted. He looked at you before you were even here. Knew who you were, knew who you were, and looked at you just as you were and put a will be over your life. Didn't somebody say, I've been adopted? Do you know your ABCs? Not only A, but B, you've been born again. John chapter 3 said, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot see or enter the kingdom of God. And I got some people out here talking about I was born this way and all that. Don't get mad at me. That's what they said. And they said I was born this way. And the reason why it's all right for me to have a certain kind of lifestyle is because I was born this way. But the Bible said it ain't enough to be have the first birth because the first birth didn't take. You got to be born. I said you got to be born again. But not only be, you've been born again, but see, do you know your ABC? Look at somebody say, do you know your ABCs? Yes. See, you've been crucified with Jesus Christ. And the Bible goes to say, Jesus is going to say, now those who come up with me, you're going to have to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. So he saves you, brings you into his family, and then he gets off the cross.
wrong. So you can get on it. But then, but if I share in his death, I also share in his resurrection. I've been crucified with Christ. Not only have I been crucified with Christ, but deed, I've been delivered. Anybody in here been delivered? You know the Bible says, who the Son set free is free indeed. And I don't care what, we got all these folks talking about liberation now, but the only one that can really show enough set you free, get you off the plantation, and bring you into his palace is Jesus who is the Christ, who the Son has set free. Is free indeed. You are delivered. You are more than what you are addicted to. You are more than your habit. I don't care what you got, what you into, but he set you free. And don't allow yourself to be defined by what you are locked into because you are greater than that. And he has set you free. Yeah, you got some alcoholic problem, but your identity ain't alcoholic. Your identity is delivered. And I need to live in light of the freedom that he's given me. Look at somebody say, do you know your ABCs? Not only do I have deliverance, but E, I got eternal life. And now you do know eternal life. We've talked about this before. Eternal life is not just living forever. Folk that go to hell don't live forever. But Jesus is going to say in John chapter 17, this is eternal life that you might know the only true God. And Jesus Christ whom he sent. That is, that eternal life is God giving you his kind of life. When he brings you into his family and not only shows himself to you, but shares himself with you. Do you know your ABCs? Right. If you've been forgiven. And I wish to God that our churches would learn that fact that you have finally and fully been forgiven in Jesus Christ. It's the gift that we never really believe we got. We believe we redeemed to a certain point. We believe that we accepted to a certain point. We believe that we're loved to a certain point. But forgiveness is the one thing we always ask God to give us, but the thing we never believe that we truly have. How many prayers do you hear when God, when people turn around and say, Lord, I thank you for forgiving me. No, you don't hear that that much. What you hear is, Lord, I messed up. Please forgive me. Lord, I sinned. Please forgive me. And you are, I mean, if all the prayers like that, that means that you can never be satisfied and never be secure in a forgiving state. No wonder you got a problem forgiving your spouse. No wonder you got a problem forgiving your children. No matter you got a problem forgiving your parents. No matter who reason you got a problem forgetting that friend to turn that back on you because you don't know what forgiveness is. If you have not experienced forgiveness, you can't dismiss forgiveness. The only reason you can forgive is because Christ has forgiven you. Matter of fact, you want to lift your hands and say, Lord, expectation. Also, I, 
I got the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. You know, in the Old Testament, he would come upon people. And then he leaves. You remember what David said? He said, take not your Holy Spirit away from me. You do know that you ain't got to pray that no more. Because you got something that David didn't have. You on the other side of the cross. And the Holy Spirit has been dispensed and now he has come to live inside of you so much so that he said that now your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I wish I had somebody in here. When I said that, yeah, he indwells in me, so I ain't got to wait until I get to know church in order to experience his presence. I ain't got to wait until the music starts to experience his presence. Matter of fact, that's why I always pray, Lord, do what preaching by itself can't do, because I know the Holy Ghost. You listen to this sermon, and the benediction is gone. It's only so far I can go with you. It's only so much the preacher can do with you. But you get in the car, the Holy Ghost will get in the car with you. The Holy Ghost will ride home with you. By the time you get to Trinity on the night, he'll start talking to you and you'll try to shut him out. You'll get to the house and close your door and the Holy Ghost will get in that room. Now, I'm still trying to talk to you because he walks with me and he... Do you know your ABCs? I, yeah, indwelling spirit, but not only do I have I, but I got J. J is, I got joy. That's and full of glory. Now you do know there is a difference between happiness and joy. Yeah, you uh, give a crackhead some crack. He'll be happy. You give alcoholic. I wish I had somebody. Give him some Hennessy. Do I have a witness in here? He'll be happy. Yeah, if you want a liar to be happy, yeah. let them tell you a lie and you believe it. <laughs> but happiness comes and goes, brothers and sisters. But joy is when all of me is able to celebrate all of God in all situations. There's some places and situations I can't take happiness to. I can't take happiness to H-E-B.
In order for you to know how to love, you got to know, you got to have somebody to love you. And as he teaches you how to love, you're able to pass this thing on. I've been loved with an everlasting love. But let me take love somewhere it don't supposed to go. Let's understand what true love is. Can I do it one more time for you? I said, can I do it one more time? What is love? It's a what? An unconditional, sacrificial commitment to invest for the best of the other person. Let's do it one more time now. I'm going to be my, we've been talking about this for 12 years. Y'all ought to have a lesson by now. If you need to use a cheat sheet, go ahead and do it. If you got to cop out somebody's paper, let's do it one more time. What is love? Love is a what? Um, unconditional, sacrificial.
But God majors in changing folk. Don't you ever look at somebody and say in light of where you be that you will never change. Because although humanly speaking, they're stuck. But God got the power to change anybody. There's some things that God never seen before. Let me do that again. I said there's some things that God ain't never seen before. Let me do it one more time. There are some things that God ain't never seen before. He never seen a sin he couldn't forgive. He never seen a problem he couldn't solve. And he never saw a sinner that he cannot change. So if any man be in Christ, he is. He is a new creature. Dickie Thompson, can we do it one more time before I go? Can I tell him one more time? That he'll turn a dope dinner into a deacon. Can I tell you one more time? That he know how to turn a pimp into a preacher. Can I tell you one more time? That he know how to turn a fool into a theologian. Let me go to remind you of this. I'm preserved by the power of 
and there is no greater power. Matter of fact, when Satan want to come messing with me, yeah. he first got to get permission. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. He said, God, I don't like what you're doing. Yeah. I want to fight you. Uh, God said, okay, let's fight then. All right. Satan about to walk away. God said, hold up before you leave, Satan. You need some power to fight me. Yeah. And since I own all the power, let me let you borrow some of mine. But when I wax your behind with the sun, bow down and acknowledge that I am God. And you are not. Anybody know he got all power? That means he's some of all the power that exists and all the power that is exercised. And he sits on top of the power and rules and regulates according to his will and his way. Because I'm preserved by the power of 
or you become your own God. In the Christian faith, you can't reach up to your God. Thank you, Lord. He's too high. You can't work your way up to him. You can't reason your way up to him. He has to reach down to you and do in you and through you and for you what you can't do for yourself. says, well, you know, I, I, I'm just religious or I'm just spiritual. I don't need all that Christianity. Matter of fact, Jesus wasn't no Christian. And then it killed me how y'all act like they say something deep. Come on, Jesus ain't no Christian. Let me break that down for you. It's just, a, it's really a stupid statement. Okay, because first of all, what does Christian mean? It means that you belong to Christ. So if Jesus was saying he was a Christian, he'd be saying something like, I belong to myself. I mean, that's kind of stupid. No, Jesus wasn't a Christian. He was the anointed one. And everybody who follows him is a part of the anointed one. So don't let people play these name games with you and these word games with you. No, uh-uh. Well, we don't know the right, correct spelling and the pronunciation of his name. So y'all sitting up there saying Jesus. It wasn't even no check. It's like, okay. All right. I'll give you that. Maybe we don't know how to pronounce the name right. Yeah. But here's the thing. When you his child, when you when God is your father and you his child, it's kind of like a baby. All of our children, we got six kids. And when they were babies, they would get wet, the diaper would get wet, they get hungry, and sometimes they get stuck. And every time they have one of the diaper change or they got stuck, or they got hungry, they would cry out. Now, they didn't know how to pronounce my name. They did not know how to spell Sean. S-E-A-N. They did not know how to pronounce Cecilia. They did not know how to spell her name. C-E-C-E-L-I-A. But they did know that I know that best mama, best dad, and when I'm dirty, Thank you. 